It's extremely popular these days to say the Bible can't be trusted, but really? Now, my goal here is not to give a bunch of proofs like the unassailable prophecy proof, the fact that there are literally hundreds of precise, clear, and specific future events spoken in the Bible, sometimes hundreds of years before they actually happen. You know, no other book can claim that, but who cares? I'm not even going to dig into the internal consistency proof that demonstrates the amazing unity of the Bible, or even its miraculous survival over the centuries. No, 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 no. I'm just going to ask you to be honest and follow along. Let's say you find a piece of paper in a hotel with this written on it. It was at 822 Fifth Street in someplace Texas when Scott somebody was mayor. Jim lived there with his wife and two daughters. Most people called him Little Jim. He liked to wear a gray baseball cap and blue overalls. He was a manager of a place called Corner Pantry, where he worked for a long time. The town called him a hero because he fought in a war. He's also a hero because one rainy day, he lifted a huge car off of a child all by himself. He died on April 4th, 1990. 500 people were at his funeral. Signed, Polly. That's it. Now what part do you believe and what part are you skeptical about? If you are skeptical, why? Because you automatically rule out certain kinds of things? Because a professor or friend told you something? Or did you investigate for yourself? Hey, I'm just asking. Now for the fun of it, yes, this is actually fun for me. Let's just say you don't believe any of it and you're determined to prove it all wrong. Okay, first thing you do is pop up a map and look for someplace Texas. Well, there it is. It's a real place. You go there and find 822 Fifth Street. Facts are checking out, but you're not easily fooled. You go to the local newspaper archives and you find that Scott somebody was indeed the man mayor, and you see little Jim died on April 4th, 1990. The article also mentions his service in the army, and that around 500 people were at little Jim's funeral. But wait a second. You notice the word manager is misspelled on that piece of paper, and two words were misread. Trickery, you shout. This writer has concocted a story to fool us and somehow got all these things to line up with their foolhardy fabrication. You don't have a motive or a reason, but come on. You're not going to let this deplorable, downright dubious dummy deceive a determined decoder destined to demystify delirious drivel, so you focus on the car lifting scenario. If you can disprove that, you assume Assume for some arbitrary reason, the whole story is a lie. So, you locate an old storage place that one of little Jim's daughters rents. You find a drawing of a man lifting a car off a girl, a license plate, and another piece of paper that says, Thank you, Dad, for saving my sister's life. I saw a miracle that day. You ponder for a moment, then consider the best explanation. Well, I think you get where I'm going. The Bible is much like Polly's letter, citing names, places, and events which can be investigated. So happens over 25,000 archaeological finds have confirmed people, places, and events in the Bible. Not one has ever refuted it. Then we have the question of motive. Why would Polly put all these facts in her letter, then lie or somehow make a mistake about the most important part of the story that she saw with her own eyes? Even more, how is it that the writers of the Bible get all the common things right, but somehow get the uncommon things wrong, especially the New Testament writers whose lives were on the line? I mean, would you put your life on the line and testify to something you were unsure about or knew was a lie? No way, not a chance. No, these writers, like honest historical writers, other ancient biographers or dutiful journalists today recorded what they witnessed, what they heard from eyewitnesses, what they investigated, and what was passed down to them from trustworthy people. They weren't tricked, fooled, mistaken, or making stuff up. Just listen. Now the rest of the acts of Jeroboam, how he warred and how he reigned, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Simple and straightforward, right? This is how most of the Bible is written. Don't believe me? Read it for yourself. But suffice to say, this ridiculous assertion, this unjustified claim that the Bible can't be trusted has been debunked. Adios. This video was fully funded by a generous donation. To keep debunked videos free, please consider a tax-deductible donation or reach out to us to sponsor a video.